it's Christine Stitch All The Things. Welcome to my channel today. Uh, if you're new, thanks for stopping by, checking it out, seeing if you, if you like my content. Uh, and if you're returning, thank you so much for checking back in and seeing what's going on with me this past week. Um, today is Monday, July 1st. I cannot believe it's July already. Um, and I'm coming to you from my new area, my new sewing setup at the Oregon house. Um, I think I kind of need to address that. Uh, I've gone back and forth as to whether I should say anything or not. Um, but I think I will. Uh, just because a few people are a little like, are you're in Oregon? What's going on? Um, so a lot of you may know that we're, we're now snowbirds. Um, and how we came by this house, that's a, that's a, a little bit of a story. So, um, if you just want to get straight to stitching and stuff like that, go to, yeah, this minute right here. But if you want to stick around to see why on earth I'm at a second house, this is that story. Um, it's kind of personal. Um, but I tell you guys a lot, so... I'll just tell you this. Uh, when my husband and I first got together, um, I, I happened to be estranged from my parents. Uh, that went on for almost five years. Uh, and during the summers, we would come up to Oregon, where his family is, and visit. And sometime in those five years, I want to say maybe halfway through, at one point I told him, if anything happens to you, I'm going to move to Oregon and be by your family. Because at the time, that's the family I had. Um, I wasn't really part of the stitching, I wasn't part of the stitching community then. Um, I just started quilting, so I wasn't really part of that community. I didn't have any friends. I had him um, and my kids, um, and that was it. And. I just mentioned that, like I'm fully capable, if anything happened to him, of being able to manage a move and buy a house and all that stuff, right? But he took that statement to heart and like made it his life's mission to find a house up here that if anything happened to him, I would have a house. I would be near his family. And if you know Brad or heard me talk about him at all, um, when he when he starts thinking about something, he can ruminate on it for years as to whether he wants to do something, if it's a good idea, but he starts researching right away. And he'll research and ruminate and do all that stuff for quite a while. So for a couple years, he had it in his head that he needed to get a house up here. And I kept telling him, I, I, I don't need you to do that. I just happened to mention that I would be by your family. I love your family. So, he ended up getting hooked up with a, a realtor up here who his family has dealt with for a while. Her name's Terry. She's a great lady. Um, and he told her, you know, I think I'm going to start looking for houses. We're not ready at all to buy a house up there. We were like three years from the kids graduating. So we were just thinking about it, starting to decide if we wanted a house in an area or whatever. But when he starts looking, he starts looking. Um, and so she would find different houses here and there and tell us about them and we'd pass on them for like a couple months. But then one particular house stood out to us. And this is not like my husband at all. He told her, I wanna see it. And we actually flew up here to see the house. And both of us were kind of like, uh, I don't know why we want to do that, but we, we need to do this. So we came up, we looked at the house. It was completely not right. Not It was the tiny little house, which is what we wanted. We just wanted a tiny little house. But it just, nothing about it was right. And we looked at each other like, wow, that was just a really impulsive, bad decision. Why did we do that? So... We were here for the weekend, so we spent time with his mom, and we spent time with his sister. 
And then we went home. And the next weekend, his mom died. And so we knew that's why we had come up here. And we were having a really hard time trying to find any house and we didn't know why we were trying to force the issue because we weren't ready at all to be here to maintain a house here for half the year. I mean, we wanted a snowbird, but we weren't snowbirds yet. Anyway, so during the following week, his family was making preparations for um, her funeral and all of that. And that weekend, my brother-in-law had driven right through the neighborhood, which was one block down from their house. He never, he said he rarely ever went that way. But for some reason, he had his mother-in-law, my husband's mom's voice in his head to come down this street. And they were hammering in a realtor sign in front of this house. Wasn't even on the market yet. He called my husband and said, it's really weird, this house is going up. I don't know why I went down that way, just something about your mom's voice in my head saying I had to drive down the street, this come back this way and you should call the realtor. We called her and there had already been several phone calls into the other realtor about this house before it was even listed. So our realtor came here, did the walkthrough and messaged us, sent us emails, sent us pictures and said, I think this is your house. I feel like this is the one for you. And she listed everything wrong with it. <laughs> she put, like she sent the pictures and let the house speak for itself, but then sent us everything bad that she didn't like about it and her list was long. <laughs> but we decided to put in the offer. We um, sent a letter with our offer on this little house and message the situation around how we happen to come across it, his mom passing, all, all that stuff. And we, there were like four or five offers on this house by the end of the day before it was even listed and they picked ours. So this little house is sort of, we feel a gift from his mom. We knew that we were looking way too early, but the gift that we felt that we were given by God was a chance to say goodbye that we wouldn't have had before. Okay, so that's how we ended up with this house early. Um, I'm going to tell you that I it's a blessed life. I acknowledge that. I'm grateful for it. I'm thankful for it. Uh, a lot of people will say you're so lucky, you are blessed. They're not wrong. Uh, I will tell you, this is not a life I ever expected. Uh, I don't deserve it. Uh, I'm the first one to tell you that because I didn't earn it. Um, my husband worked really, really hard. Uh, I should tell you, his parents grew up in the Depression. And he probably won't like me saying any of this. but um, So they, uh, they got by on very little, and he did too as a youngster, as many people did. Um, growing up. Remember, there's 26 years between us, so big gap. Um, but his parents ended up being savers constantly and raised his kids to be savers. Um, he said his rule uh, when he was working, he had the fear that um, he said he always felt like the other shoe was going to drop and he was waiting for it his entire career. Something bad was gonna happen. He wouldn't get uh, a retirement or all the things that he had worked for. That was his fear that, you know, um, that something bad is just gonna happen. It's just not happened yet. Um, and so his rule was to live on only half of his paycheck and save the other half. Um, and so he is seriously a saver probably doesn't sound like it from the last two videos when I showed everything that, that we ended up having to buy, but um, he saves, he's um, frugal. Um, 
a lot of the furniture in this house that we bought is, and I'm not ashamed of this, is from thrift shops or, you're not even gonna believe it, if it's new, <laughs> we bought it from Fred Meyer, for real. And I'm not ashamed, I, I like all the little stuff in here, but um, yeah, we try to, you know, be frugal that way. But um, this hobby area, he knows that I sew and that I'm trying really hard to pay off my credit card still. I still am working on that. Um, and so he, it was important for him to um, get a sewing table, get me a cutting table and a little storage area here to put my materials. Um, so it seems really extravagant to have um, a sewing room here in Oregon uh, and one in Havasu and I wouldn't disagree with anybody who called that overindulgent and extravagant and way too much. Um, uh, I'm not going to deny that. Uh, I'm grateful that that he um, sees the value in in uh, the fact that I tried to make some money from a hobby I enjoy to help pay off this card. Um, but I'll say that I, I know I'm not deserving um, of any of it. It's not from the fruits of my labor, if you will. Um, and the only point of contention between us is that he gets mad because I'll, I'll say it's not my money. <laughs> um, I, uh, because I didn't earn it. Um, and, and that's a, a, a thing within me. I'm just confiding that into apparently the entire internet. Um, cause I'm just a stay at home mom. I've been blessed my, a lot of my life to be a stay at home mom. I, I wasn't always, um, I've had to work here and there. Um, that's just how life goes, but I know that I'm beyond blessed that I, for most of my uh, time being a mom, I was able to stay home. That's not a lot of people are able to do that who want to. Um, so I, I don't know what this all is other than to say I understand that I am blessed beyond measure. It's not of my doing. I'm not worthy of it, but I'm grateful for it. Um, I guess that's all I have to say about that. Um, anyway, so yeah, he's used to a lifestyle of being a snowbird. He didn't get to, uh, he had to stop doing that. That was what he was used to after he retired. He and his ex-wife were snowbirds from South Dakota to Arizona. Um, when he married me, he knew he had to become an Arizona resident because my kids were there. Uh, going to school and so now we're sort of doing reverse snowbird things. Uh, we just uh, Come up to I call it the cottage. It's just a little 1940s house um, here uh, That I'm uh, I love um, I mean I say little it's it's not huge, but it's not super tiny. It's a perfect little house for us um, and um, We just come up here to get away from the heat not something I ever expected I'd be able to do um, it's really weird, I'll tell you that. Um, I just sort of, I, I laugh and tell the mister, I'm just along for his life ride. Um, just along for the ride and whatever he does in his life. And he just shakes his head at me and like, but you need to participate. Well, I'm participating, I'm just sitting back like, wow, what is this? Um, so anyway. That's this room, and I guess I'll give you a brief little tour on the cell phone video of what I have here. Basically, everything um, material-wise, tools, um, that's coming back with me to Arizona. Um, and all that will remain here is just like the sewing desk, um, the this little storage unit for when I come back and I have a place to put my my um, materials. So the materials, there's not going to be two of all the materials. That's just unrealistic and extravagant. Um, and so everything will be coming with me. And then if we are ever back up here, I can bring all my materials back up and continue sewing, which this means I should be able to get Michelle Benny's bag done. Um, I'm excited about that. I don't have a chair right now. It's coming from Amazon. That'll be here on Wednesday. So right now I'm sitting in this little metal chair. 
Um, so that's, let me insert the room tour here. Okay, so I'm in the hobby area, actually the loft. There's Callie, there's the stairs downstairs. Um, this whole loft area is all wood. Um, the wood was, from what we've heard, it was taken from a high school basketball um, gymnasium. So I think the walls too, they're all reclaimed wood that they got. Um, this is just some extra stuff that was my husband's mom's and we're probably going to do something else with it. I just don't know what. So that's like a holding area. Uh, and that's a little quilt I made for her a while back. Um, this area is also kind of a junk area right now where I'm just putting stuff and my husband is too till we figure out where we're going to put it or donate it or whatever. This is going to be his area of the loft. He does amateur radio stuff. Um, he's done that for 55 years and has just not kind of fallen out of the hobby the last few years. So he wants to get that set up. He wants a joint area where we can be together when we're doing our hobbies. Um, how that's going to work with him on the radio while I'm sewing, I don't know, but it makes him feel good. So there you go. Okay, so this is my little area. Um, the table is what we bought yesterday, the, this um, table setup and this organizer, uh, it's called the Calic system. That's what we got from Ikea. I just told my husband, I just want basic stuff. I want one little drawer set section um, so I can put my some of the sewing stuff I need. Um, you'll see here, um, I use those in my sewing. Well, I don't need to explain it now, but sewing tools, um, more stuff, random odds and ends, shipping stuff. Um, and then my zippers, I didn't want to put up another zipper system. So I just threw them in the drawer. I actually took them off in Havasu just like that, threw them in here and some of my cards and stuff. Cause I didn't know where else to put them. And then of course my vinyl goes in these drawers and that's how it is in Havasu as well. Um, this, I just chose a few things of fabric to make bags with, and so that's what I brought up. Um, these are the interfacings um, for that style of bag, the glitter vinyl pouch style. People call them wedge bags. I didn't know that was a thing. I just sort of made up the pattern, and there you go, and I guess, I guess that's the style of bag. Um, and then interfacings for the clear vinyl front bag. Um, shipping stuff. Um, there's going to be a quilt kit under there. I went to Walmart to buy fabrics to make grocery bags because I did not realize that everywhere you go in Oregon, you must have your own bags. Um, that little painting, not little, uh, Josh made that for me. Um, in my pictures of the finished room, I had another stitching hung up there, but I'm going to hang that up instead because Josh did that. And that's a little thrift shop thing, thrift shop thing. Um, and here's a little stitching thing I did a while ago. Um, it's from Ursula Michaels. I'm not sure if it's under imagining or not. Sorry for the reflection. Cannot help that. Um, but I made it with gold DMC on black Ada, uh, which you can't see because I wanted it to look like the vintage machines. Um, there's another stitching I did a while ago for Brad in 2017. Um, this little table is one I've had for a while. It's one that Brad first bought me when I started sewing and we brought it up here. It's on wheels, which is good because that means I can move it over here. The press needs to use that outlet because it's a three prong outlet um, and there's no three prong outlets anywhere over here. Wiring in this house is crazy, interesting, a puzzle. My husband can't stand it, um, but I'll move that over there when I need the press or when I need the cutting table because there's no room. So I'll just move that since they're both on casters. This is the cutting table we got at Home Depot. Um, and this is the one with the drawers. So the top drawer is um, narrow. It's like eight inches um, and then holds all my little cutting stuff, all the stuff I'm always grabbing. And the bottom drawer though, is like 16 inches. So it ends up being large enough to hold my big 15 inch ruler and all even side by side with my long 24 inch ruler. I've got all those up there. The only one it can't hold is that big 20 and a half inch ruler down there. Um, but that is fine. I, I don't like, I don't need a special holder for that. It just, as long as it stands up and doesn't get hurt and that's perfect for that. So when we head back to Arizona, 
Uh, the furniture only is staying, um, except for this press, <clears throat> that's gonna stay. Everything else comes back with me uh, because it's just absolutely ridiculous to buy doubles of fabrics and materials, so I just bring those back and forth. Um, this sewing machine uh, is a straight stitch machine. It's a heavy duty vintage one. It's a 301. Her name's Olive, by the way. It's supposed to be the vintage version of this one, um, <clears throat> which is my brother PQ1500S, and that's Ellie. Um, so I'm going to actually make this bag down here. That's the one that I made as like a twin to Colette's on this machine. And if this machine can handle the, the thickness and so look as nice as what this machine can do, then this one is staying here and I don't have to bring that one back again. Uh, shipping materials there. And I'm gonna cut up all these boxes to also make flats to send out bags in. Um, and this little thing down here was made by my husband's dad for his mom. Uh, he made her a little sewing box and so that's gonna stay with me forever. Uh, so that's the room area and there you go. So that's my little tiny room tour. Um, it's not even really a room, it's just kind of half the loft. Uh, funny side note, I hate raw wood stuff. Um, I don't like wood furniture. I like painted everything, hence the white. Uh, the biggest selling point to me on this house was this little loft area that's all wood. My husband cracks up because he knows how much I don't like wood furniture and this entire part of the house, it's all wood except for this ceiling. I don't know what it is. I just absolutely love it. But this isn't my thing. Um, but I love it. Um, okay, so let's get to the stitching. Um, I remembered to bring my styrofoam or my backing board here. I just don't know where I put it. Oh, here it is. Okay, so this is the piece I worked on last week, and this is uh, how far I got. Oops, you can see my camera shadow. I'm really sorry about that. Um, the light is on the far end of the room, and I don't know how to... Um, uh, I can't face the other window right here because all you'll be looking at is a stairwell, so we're just going to have to deal with this. Okay, um, so that's as far as I got on the flowers. I only got these two petals filled in. It probably doesn't look too much like it, but that's what was finished there last night. I'm gonna have to figure something out about that shadow. Um, and then these three I have left to fill in. I'll say, uh, if you weren't watching when I talked about how I filled in these petals, I did it the same way here. I just would follow the lines um, in the petals so that the um, variegation of the floss kind of follows with it. So it, it it's not going sideways, it's going the natural way the petal would. So the color changes or the little variegation is gonna go, oh, that bothers me so much. It, and I wish that would focus. It follows the flower, there you go. Uh, so that was a lot of fun to do. I really wished I could have gotten that whole flower done, but busy week, um, not a lot of stitching time. Um, and that's as far as we got. So this week I am going to be working on, oh, I should show you first. Forever and ever is, this is what the finished piece is going to look like. You can see I have a lot to go because um, I'm only here. Yeah, that's gonna take a while, but uh, I'm excited to get that worked on. That is stitched on 36 count weathered shingles. I think that's R&R. &R. Um, I'm pretty sure. It is my favorite. This is my favorite. I call it grayish. It's gray, it's beige, it's both, and it's my favorite, other favorite neutral besides platinum. This grayish is just beautiful. As a matter of fact, her entire series Vinny um, Cottage Garden Sampling does this pattern. Um, she's got 12 charts in this whole series and I'll be doing all of them on this 
fabric as I get to them. I may only get one done a year. It may take me 12 years to do the entire series of charts, but I'm going to do them. Okay. This week, because 4th of July, I mentioned last week, I will be working on Lady of the Flag. Um, I am not going to be selling this pattern or giving it away or anything when I'm done with this only because I have been considering stitching it again in this colorway, the way it's charted, um, because I'm currently stitching it in Carrie Hankinson Reinhardt's blue conversion. And I, I'll list her, her conversion is listed in a couple groups, but I always um, credit her original post where she finished this because other people have taken her conversion and posted it in different groups. But I try to always reference her particular post where she has all of her information on this. And uh, if you click that, it's in the Stitch Mania group uh, on Facebook. If you join that group, please remember you have to answer some questions. Um, if you don't answer the questions, they won't let you in. Uh, it is a group where um, you need to read the rules because some people get offended by some of the uh, patterns they see in there. Um, and uh, if you read the rules and you agreed to them when you answer the questions, you, you, you should know what to expect in the group. I'm just going to say that. Um, anyway, um, I'm doing Carrie's blue conversion. I've only got two colors of blue here. I'm stitching it on the preamble fabric by Cindy Sorley of Stitchery Express. That will also be linked. Um, Carrie's post with her conversion and the fabric will be linked um, under the projects mentioned part where I talk about this. Um, you can you can find both of those links there. I will say on Carrie's original link, she has the original post and realized she made an error in the beads and in the comments of that post, she corrects it. So you'll need to make sure to read the comments as well of that post. Um, but I'm excited to work on this one this week. Um, that should be that should be fun uh, to get back to that. Um, I am not sure if I was going to say anything else about that um, other than um, if I do end up changing my mind about this pattern, I will likely, instead of selling it or passing it on to someone, put it in a giveaway on my video. I think that's most fair to all of you guys. I, I tend to like to pass them on in a giveaway to you when I'm done with stuff. That is, if I don't keep this chart, that's what will happen. So I just want to clarify that because last video I got about four messages asking me what I'm going to do with, with this. And, and so I just want to clarify that for everyone. Uh, okay. Business from last week. I know I'm like 22 minutes in. Um, I may edit out some of this personal stuff I talked about. Uh, if it stays around 22 minutes, you know I didn't. If it's less, then you know I probably rethought some personal comments and decided to remove them. Um, but you all are very kind and understanding, and um, you're my friends. You feel like my friends, so I don't know if I'm going to leave them in or not. We'll see. You'll see. You'll know when this is up. Um, I do want to say the birds. Uh, last week, Callie and I were talking about, we put up bird feeders. There were no birds. The birds came this morning, um, except they, uh, two, two things to note about the birds coming. Um, one, I had spilled the seed all over my table and my deck when I was filling the bird feeders. I didn't spill a ton, but I spilled a bit. So I just brushed it all off the table. Um, didn't get all of it, so there's birds all over my table, my chairs, and the deck. Um, and then they went up and finally found where the feeders were, and that was amazing. Um, and the second bad thing I wasn't really thinking about is the apple trees right there, which is really good. So they could go sit in the apple tree and then come over to the feeders. And I was reading um, on one of the booklets my husband brought home um, about feeding the birds that they, they need a, a place nearby to sit and then come feed, which is great. Except they're picking up my apples. 
Like, I want the birds to come, but I don't want them to pick at my apples, but they're picking at the apples because that's what birds do. Uh, I was pleased until I saw a woodpecker pecking at the apple tree, and that part didn't make me so happy. Um, I grew up in an area where woodpeckers just destroyed your houses, um, so those aren't my best friends, um, but nothing I can do about them because they apparently need to be fed like all the other birds and go peck an eve or something. Um, but they finally came, and so that's exciting. Okay, so really long intro for, for this week. Um, maybe that'll make up for if I don't get time to record. Um, we'll see. So I hope you guys are having a great day, and I will see you in the next segment. Hello, everyone. Today is Saturday, July 6th. So yeah, I'm going to wrap up this week's video series, um, which only consists of two days. Uh, I, I have no excuses. I'm just not in a good routine uh, yet. We're starting to get there. Um, just a busy week. We did actually take a day off, kind of, on 4th of July. Uh, except we all went out and still had to clean up some yard stuff. Um, Kelly and I picked uh, apples off the ground from the apple tree and my husband um, filled back up the yard waste bin with all the apple branches. So he was out there cutting that stuff up. Um, and then on Friday, we went to Mill City to um, go see my husband's son and, and family. They have a booth uh, at the little flea market fair sort of thing that they do in Mill City for the 4th of July. It's a small town thing. It's really... It's really fun and sweet actually to go there. We didn't go there for 4th of July. We were kind of hoping to, but um, they had to man their booth and so it, it just didn't work out. So for 4th of July here, we just, um, after we got our yard work done in the morning, um, Callie and I just cut up some watermelon. We made burgers, turkey burgers. Uh, which actually were pretty good. I found a decent recipe for making your own from actually ground turkey meat, so it didn't taste like cardboard. Uh, everyone was impressed, I think. Um, I grilled those on the barbecue, first time I've used the barbecue this year. Um, and then we just, um, Callie and I played games, aggravation card games and stuff like that throughout the afternoon. And then I stitched a little bit in the evening. So it was really nice to take a rest day then. Um, and then Friday, you know, after we got back from Mill City, we weren't there a long time, just a couple hours. Uh, my husband, of course, had to go tear down some little fence area the previous owners put up. They put up like one panel of fencing against a chain link fence between us and our neighbors, which we really like. Uh, and that's it. We don't, there's like no rhyme or reason why this one big panel of fence was up and the wood was all rotted out and nails rusted so I went out there and helped him tear that down and gather all the rusted nails and then I spent the rest of the day stitching so uh yeah those were our two kind of relaxed days it was really nice after like a month of just running and busy work um new addition to the room the tv um that was a surprise from Brad I heard Callie say, you got a TV? And I heard him tell her, well, yeah, I know your mom needs one because she always has a stitchy friend on in the background. How sweet, right? I was just like, oh, he knows I need my floss tube friends. Uh, but I haven't watched any floss tube yet because just busy work. I did start, um, as far as sewing goes, I did start to make three sizes of a bag as a test pattern for one of my favorite bag pattern designers so sweetness cannot show you yet because uh, the pattern has not been released um i actually hid all my stuff back there behind the sewing machine um but i it was nice to get back to work and and with testing a new pattern it's challenging because you don't i, I don't know the pattern i don't know how it's going to come together and so it was a good sorry fun way to um, start some sewing again up here, but um, I'm not used to the new setup. Uh, the only downside is my sewing area is completely opposite of my pressing and um, cutting area, 
which is good in that it makes me get up and walk walk over and so I'm getting exercise constantly um, it's just not it's not efficient but it's better health wise so I'm okay with that um, so that's kind of what we've been up to this week um, I got a couple things in um, the mail so I'll go over that first and then I'll show you the stitching that I, I do I'm doing okay first thing I bought this skinny taste air fryer cookbook for the convection oven which just came in today and so I'm excited to work with that and the first thing I'm gonna make is actually tonight and I can't wait it looks so so good if I can get there, oh, I think it was page, what is this, 81, did it say? Yeah, no glasses on, so I'm having to, no, not 81. Yeah, little, okay, I got a cheesy green chili chicken chimichanga. I say changa like that because I make fun of Brad who calls them chimichangas when we go into the restaurant. And I'm always like, honey, they're chimichangas. And he always orders chimichanga. And I'm like, it's chimichanga. Stop saying changa. <sighs> so now I say it all the time to tease him, but now I'm saying chimichanga. Anyway, that's gonna be tonight's dinner. I'm super excited to try that, it looks so good. Um, so yeah, and then there's a chicken cordon bleu recipe in there. Can't wait to try that. All right, something else I got in the mail and um, other floss tubers probably already got this in. Mine's late because I forgot to change the address with um, uh, the Silver Needle in Oklahoma. I'm part of the little help from our Stitching Friends Club uh, and I didn't tell them for the last shipment, can you ship it to Oregon? Um, I, th so they just shipped it to Arizona and it got forwarded. So I'm a little late, but look at cute tissue paper, right? So cute. Okay. Sorry. I know this is right near the microphone. So the tissue paper is going to crinkle. All right. This is a cute, a cute one. This is the Blackbird's design one. I've been looking forward to this the whole program, I mean the whole uh, subscription. It's called In My Garden by Blackbird Designs is Alma Allen. Um, I don't know why they don't have Bard listed on there, but maybe just Alma designed this. Um, okay, so I just gotta, I gotta show you the picture of it finished. Look at that. So it's a little drum, it comes with the counting pins and they even included the little rusty, well, it's not rusty, the little galvanized um, uh, watering can for it. So cute, right? Um, and of course you saw, I think the Jelly Bellies on there. Can't eat them. Cause, well, I probably can. I gotta go see how many points those are, but I don't know that I want to eat them. I may give them to Kelly or, or Brad. All right, so here's the pattern in my garden and it's in the paper still sorry so it is the little drum they give um they gave us some 32 count i think this is a week's linen and cocoa uh, i forgot what they said already I just read it oh no 28 count hand dyed cocoa gingham linen and then of course all of the flosses <laughs> they tied one together look it with a metallic like twist tie. What? I don't know what that was about, but that cracked me up. Maybe there's a note in there, like this is for one part of the chart, this is for another, I don't know. Um, but those are the flosses. So pretty, right? You can still see the shadow of my camera. And these are the counting pins. How pretty. Um, these are from, it said, said somewhere, I don't know. Uh, the floss is classic color works and, uh, oh, Debbie from My Big Toe Designs made the pins. And then of course, always a needle, a John James needle, which I never use because they're not petite. And I stitch with petite, so. That was cool, this is the last one that I'm gonna get. I did not sign up again. 
uh, just because I, these typically ranged from about, I'm gonna say 40 to $50 shipped and um, every two months. It's not a once a month thing, it's every other month. And I just, I just don't, like if I'm gonna throw down 50 bucks uh, every other month on stitching supplies, I think I'd rather it be something that I, I decided and chose for myself, like a pattern I'm really excited about or whatever, rather than these surprise patterns. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm just gonna go ahead and, and, and I don't know what I'm gonna go ahead and do. That's just how I think about it, that I can spend my $50 choosing things I like a little better. Cause I didn't like, well, I liked all of them, but I didn't love all of them. You know what I mean? From the club, they were okay. One of them I actually sold uh, cause it was the B one and I'm not really big into bees and that sold really fast, but that is just not my thing. Uh, the other thing I bought was some Krynic in this gray. Um, I actually don't like to use the Krynic number four braid. I like to use Petite Treasure Braid, but I could not find a con um, a conversion um, from Krynic to Petite Treasure Braid that th it was this color gray. So if any of you know, let me know. Um, this is, I believe this set, um, what number is this? I think it's, let me look at my pattern. Um, 025, 025 for Krynic number four braid. Uh, and I wanted to make sure I got it right because it needed to match the floss for my Mirabilia because it goes right down the flagpole on one side. Um, and so it's kind of a, I looked at the petite treasure braid I had. I had a black silver and that had just too much silver in it. I had a regular silver, but not a gunmetal gray really is what this looks like to me. So if you have a petite treasure braid that that is this color, can you let me know uh, what that is, uh, what number that is? Um, because I would still order that instead. I just really prefer the um, Rainbow Gallery Petite Treasure Braid. Okay, um, speaking of purchases, I failed miserably in the last six months. Excuse me. Sorry, my husband is out grocery shopping. He's hunter-gathering is what he calls it. Um, and, and he had a question, so. Anyway, um, I was saying I fail miserably uh, the last, the first six months of the year at Stitch From Stash. And so like by month four, I just stopped, stopped calculating, stopped all that. Um, but I'm starting up brand new for July. Uh, for the last six months of the year. So I'm doing a $25 budget. I'll be checking in with you. Um, so far, I bought two things without even thinking. One I needed, the Krynic Metallic, um, or number four braid for Lady of the Flag. And the other one was just last night. I don't know why I do this. Every year I see the Halloween issue come out and I buy the digital issue hoping I'm gonna love all of the patterns in it. And like the last three years, I have not loved all the patterns in it. I scrolled through quickly last night and I'm not as disappointed as I was last year or the year before. It looked like there's a lot of cute little Halloween ornaments and I do want to eventually get a little Halloween ornament tree for myself. So I was pleased with that. But some of the bigger patterns, mm, not a fan at all. There was a Halloween drum in there. Somebody, uh, Praiseworthy Stitches has a, a little drum in there and I thought that was really cute. Um, and since mine's the digital issue, I can't do a flip through. So I'm sure Danielle Stitcherista or someone's gonna do a flip through soon for you guys. But um, yeah, that's $9.99. Um, and so um, ordered that. And this I ordered from Amazon because I wanted it quick. It was prime, it was like six something. And I looked over at um, one, two, three stitch and with the price it was plus shipping, it would have been like five something. And so I thought, good enough, that's just, that's fine. Um, I'll pay for the, the convenience of having it here in two days. Um, so speaking of that, the piece I worked on this week was Lady of the Flag. 
And I was trying to show before I was working, I think I was trying to tell you, I was right in this area here. This is like the middle of the piece. I started in the middle and I'm actually gonna uh, stitch this and go up. So part of the, basically I make a working copy and the working copy of the first half is like a page and then a little half page, not even a half page, like a quarter page of stitching. So I'm working on the quarter page of stitching. What I decided to do is because this quarter page of stitching is actually done on two eight, eight by 11 sheets of paper, the first half, the first page has most of the flag and some of the dress, and then the second page has all this part of the dress. And I decided I'm not gonna work on the flag at all this time. I just wanna get the dress done. Um, so I'm going to show you that, uh, you can see when I hold this up, you'll see, I started part of this little thing here that goes out, um, on her dress. Oh, that just focused. And then it went away. Let's see if I can get it back in. I can't stand that this will focus well for me sometimes and not others. Anyway, um, you'll see when I hold it up the part that I'm working on now. Okay, so this is how much I've gotten done. Those blank spots here, this one right down here is where the flagpole goes. I've gotten one side of the flagpole in a gray. I need to add in the krynic there. This empty spot here is where the flag comes down. The red flag comes down in there. I know it's not focusing. Oh, there you go. Nice, finally. Okay, so this is part of where the red flag is, right at the bottom, um, the bottom part of the little sweep, swoopy of the flag. And then um, all these blank spots are where beads are. This is right here going down. This is the, the far edge of the dress. And then this is gonna be her swoopy ribbon this way. It's not gonna focus this time, is it? Yeah, it is. There you go. So that's where I am on this pattern. Um, I'll be working on this tonight, Saturday night and Sunday. Um, I've decided to switch my projects on Monday and I actually haven't figured out my project for next week. Um, let's pick now. I've already done love. Um, Ava needs some love, we all know that. Um, what do I want to do? What do I want to do? I think, what do I want to work on for the next week? Okay, I have like four things to choose from. Ava is one. That's the burlesque zombie portrait. Um, Away We Ride is another. Um, I have uh, Letters from Mom, which is this one, which I've not really started on. Those are ones I haven't done yet and I need to get back into the rotation. And like I said, I'm trying to do one new a week to set up my rotation. Um, and then I don't think I'm gonna put my, thir my um, dark 13 in rotation. I think I'm gonna choose a way we write. This'll be next week's stitching. I love this one anyway. So that's what's up for next week. We'll be away we ride. Um, so next week, I, I'll start the week off Monday videoing and showing you how far I got on Lady of the Flag. Uh, and then next week stitching, I'll continue on, um, add another one to my rotation, and that's gonna be away we ride, which means the last two to fit into a rotation are gonna be Ava and Letters from Mom. Um, I just don't feel like bringing Ava out yet. Like I want to, but she's so big and um, heavy in the frame. And so I'm just not ready to fuss with that yet. Uh, so I, the rest of today, I'm going to edit this video together. Um, apologize if the first half was a little too uh, long, emotional, whatever. I realized later I was really trying to make uh, a couple points with that and I don't think I did so hopefully I will edit in um, writing that that when I was trying to make a particular point I'll have to say this is the point I was trying to make because I just was 
blabbering on, but hopefully that wasn't too offensive for anybody. I was just trying to explain why, why this um, house, <laughs> that's all. So with that, I hope you guys have had a great week. If you're in California, um, I've got a lot of family in California. I'm from California, so I understand the earthquake thing going on for you guys. Uh, for most people, it's just like, yep, that's just what happens. Um, and for others, they're kind of freaking out a little bit. But um, just stay safe over there. Go find your doorway. Whatever. Don't fall off the United States is all I'm saying, okay? I'm not ready for you to go. And for everyone else, uh, if you're in the States, I hope you had a great fourth. If you're in Canada, I hope you had a great Canada day. I totally forgot to mention that on Monday. Um, and for everyone else, happy stitching. Uh, have a great week. Stitch all the things. Thank you for watching, liking, commenting, subscribing. I appreciate all of that. Um, and until next week, I'll see you later. Bye.